FFF or traditional extrusion based 3D printing has had a ton of accessories come out over the past few years to aid with the printing process. Some of these things include things like enclosures, flex plate systems, um, different adhesives, we've got water soluble, we've got breakaway support material, and all these things are there in order to help make the 3D printing process easier, make it more repeatable, and of course allow us to do things that we wouldn't be able to do without these accessories. Resin 3D printing has really been lacking in accessories, which is partially due to the fact that it hasn't been available to the masses for nearly as long, but we are starting to see some accessories come out, and if you check out my previous video on things I've learned from resin 3D printing, I talk about all of the accessories I use in my day to day and some of my favorite accessories. Well, there is one accessory in particular that I've been using for quite a few weeks now that I did not mention in that video, which I am pretty pumped to share with you guys today. So Wham Bam, the makers of one of my favorite flex plate systems for FFF printers, reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked if I would be interested in beta testing their flex plate system for resin printers. Yes, flex plates for resin printers. Now, uh, this is not something that I had seen talked about before, and it's not something that I had actually really thought of before, but when I saw that email, I was beyond hyped and said, yes, absolutely, the idea of being able to print out a resin print, take it over to my cleaning bucket or my anti-cubic wash and cure station, flex it off, and just print again was incredibly exciting as over the past couple years of resin printing, I've lost a few prints from scraping because they're stuck too hard and a little fragile piece pops off. So again, the idea of having a flex plate system on a resin printer was somewhat of a dream come true to me. So I was very excited to test this out. Well, since Wham Bam has officially released this to the public, I am now able to share my information on this. And so in today's video, we're gonna talk about what all is included in the kit what installing this into your resin printer looks like, and of course, what my experience has been like printing with it over the past few weeks. I hope you guys are excited. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So the version that I was sent is the double Wham Bam system, and the only difference between this one and the regular one is that there are two of the spring steel uh, beds that you can print on, which basically means that if your print's done, you can swap it out and just pop a new build plate on there and hit print while you're post-processing and cleaning up the original build plate. So the whole system is identical, with the only difference in the double system that I've got is that there is two spring steel sheets. So as I mentioned, let's take a look at what comes with the kit. It's actually quite similar to if you've ever seen a flex plate system on a FFF printer. You've got your magnetic base. The magnetic base has a 3M adhesive on one side, and this is the base that you're permanently going to adhere to your resin printer's current build plate. Wham Bam has confirmed that the adhesive that they used is going to be resistant to resin, to IPA, and to whatever other cleaning agents that you would normally use to clean off your build plate as well as your resin parts, so that is great. Along with that, you're gonna have either one or two spring steel beds which will attach to that magnetic base, again, depending on whether you get the regular or the double Wham Bam. And you're also going to have a little bit of sandpaper. Now the sandpaper is only there in case you end up scuffing up your flex plate system. You can use the uh, very fine grit sandpaper to kind of buff out any scratches that you may get. Um, I didn't need to use a sandpaper at all, period, um, to operate the flex plate system normally. So again, they just have that as a precautionary. And then of course you get a Wham Bam sticker or two. So in this video, we're gonna be installing this in my Elegoo Mars. They do have quite a few different sizes available, all the way from the small Elegoo Mars up to the Pia Poly Phenom, which is a massive printer, as well as quite a few in between. So be sure to take a look and see if they've got one that will fit your resin printer, because they do have quite a few different sizes. So the most important thing is getting the magnetic base installed correctly. And in order to do this, we really need to clean our resin printer's build plate. That means we need to get rid of any cured resin, any uncured resin, any dust, any particles, and Wham Bam recommends to actually take your current build plate, drop it into IPA, and just scrub it. I didn't have enough IPA because IPA has been a bit scarce, so what I did end up doing was making sure that I cleaned it up, I took IPA on a bunch of paper towels and scrubbed it down, and then I let it dry, and then I rinsed and repeated multiple times until I felt like I was happy with the texture on the build plate and I didn't feel any more resin on there. Um, they even recommend that you take your current build plate and put it under a UV light. So that way, if there is any loose resin, you can make sure that that's cured before applying this. Because again, the magic is with that magnetic base and you really wanna make sure that it's going to hold on tight. So take your time and make sure you get your build plate nice and clean. 
Now, once you've got a clean build plate, applying it is actually very simple. I recommend peeling off about one inch of the backing on the 3M adhesive, lining up those two corners of the magnetic base, and then kind of pressing while you're pulling the backing off. So start at one side and press as you peel it off along the bed. Your goal here is kind of similar to if you're applying a uh, phone protector is you don't want any air bubbles to build up. So again, make sure you start at one side and press slowly across as you're peeling the back off in order to not have any air bubbles um, build up or get trapped underneath the magnetic base. Once done with this, what I ended up doing was taking off my build plate and putting some pressure for about 30 seconds to a minute down on the magnetic base just to help make sure that it got a really good bond. And then Wham Bam does recommend actually letting it sit overnight before printing on it just to make sure that the adhesive has got enough time to truly bond to your build plate, uh, which is what I did just to make sure I'd rather be safe than sorry. I, I did let it sit overnight before actually printing on it. Now that you've got the magnetic base stuck to your build plate, you can go ahead and grab the spring steel and slap that onto the magnetic base. All that's left now is to adjust our Z height since by adding this, we are adding two and a half millimeters to the build plate's height. For printers like the Frozen Sonic Mini, this is really easy to do because when you level it, it doesn't only level in a horizontal direction, but it also levels in the vertical direction. So when you loosen those screws, you can have it just go up two and a half millimeters, but on a machine like the Elegu Mars, it's got kind of like a uh, ball head on the bed, which works great for leveling, but does not allow you to raise the bed up two and a half millimeters. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to need to raise up the little arm that triggers the end stop when the printer homes by just two and a half millimeters, which is quite easy to do. So Wham Bam designed a tiny little spacer that is two and a half millimeters thick, and we're going to need to print this out. And you can print this out on a FFF or extrusion based 3D printer. You can print this out, of course, on your resin printer. It doesn't matter. I chose to do it in PTG on my Ender 5 Plus, which was kind of funny because it was the tiniest print on the largest of printers. But all in all, this took me about five minutes to print out. And again, it's just a tiny little spacer. Once completed, all I had to do was remove the two screws that are currently holding in the little metal homing arm on the Elegu Mars place the spacer underneath it, and then reapply those two screws, and that was all. I would say the total time was under five minutes, but you can probably do it in a minute or two if you're quick enough and you're not trying to get camera shots, but either way, it, it is a really easy thing to do. Now, the last thing that Wham Bam does recommend that you do is just quickly relevel your build plate. This is really easy to do um, by just taking a piece of printer paper like you would normally do. And I actually, on my printer, didn't have to relevel anything. So maybe just a quick check to make sure that it's still the correct distance away from where you want it as far as the tension goes on that paper, and then you're ready to go. Now, Wham Bam is working on creating different spacers or having the community create different spacers for various machines. So um, as different people provide these two and a half millimeter spacers for the machines that need them, uh, Wham Bam is going to make them accessible. So that way for those that don't feel comfortable modeling something, even though, again, modeling a little spacer would be quite easy, these STLs are all gonna be available so you can just print them out and apply them to your resin printer if that's something that's required for your printer. Once installed, I was really excited to see how well it would work out. All the resin printers I've used pretty much have all used a aluminum build plate with almost a little bit of texture on it, like a powder coated aluminum. So seeing that this was such a smooth spring steel uh, bed or spring steel sheet, I was curious to see how well the parts would actually adhere. So I went ahead and poured in some smoky black Soriatech fast resin into the Elegu Mars, and I hit print with my normal settings. I didn't change the initial burn-in time. I didn't change any of the um, standard layer times, and I figured I would just run with it and see how well it worked. I checked on it a few times while I was printing at about the uh, quarter point, half point, and three quarter point, and each time I saw the part was still sticking to the build plate and I was good to go. Once the print job was done and the Elegu beeped at me, I was super excited to see whether the part was still hanging on there and what it all looked like, and I came up to the Elegu Mars looked at it and it looked just like any normal print job. The part was sitting there dripping with resin and the flex plate system was holding the part as it should. And so it was kind of the moment of truth. I wasn't sure how easy it would be to take the flex plate system off or how easily the part would flex off. And so I used my nail to grab the spring steel and peel it off from the magnetic base, which does stick quite hard, which is what you want. You don't want the spring steel to be able to peel away from the magnetic base. I took it over to my bucket of cleaning agent and flexed the bed and the part just dropped right in without any like force, without any struggle. It, it, it was awesome. Like I, I think that I might have the footage of when I first did it, but both me and my fiance Aaron saw it and I was just like, that's badass.
Dude. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> so once I knew that it worked, I went ahead and printed out a couple other things. The first print was actually hollowed out. So I wanted to print some solid pieces to make sure it would be able to hold up to a little bit more of additional weight, which both cases it did. They printed out exactly like I would uh, again, have expected there was no issues with the adhesion. One of the prints I did leave on there for about two days because I was busy working on other things. And when I went to remove the spring steel, the part actually very easily fell off of the uh, bed without me even taking the thing off and bending it. It actually fell into the vat, which um, is something that I think is attributed to me having left the part just sitting there for a couple of days. But if it does happen again, my workflow is probably gonna be still take the build plate off and then just flex it into the bucket. Um, but for the other times it worked fine, but for the one time I left the part on there for two days, it did fall off. So um, that is one thing to note. So the sweet thing about the double wham bam system, which is the one I got, is that you can basically take that spring steel off of your mag magnetic base with the printed part on it, throw that whole thing in your ultrasonic cleaner and have it do its whole cleaning process. But while it's doing that, take your second, um, your second spring steel base, slap that on there and hit print, which is going to minimize downtime. I can see this being really valuable for someone that's doing like small batch production or maybe someone that's doing um, some resin printing as a service or has a little web shop. Uh, definitely minimizing downtime is a huge plus. So having the two uh, different spring steel beds is a pretty cool feature. So the last thing I wanted to test out was just printing multiple objects. I found Benchy because I love Benchy and I scaled it down 50% and multiplied it by five times. So I had it all the way from the left of the Elegu Mars' bed to the right side of the bed. And I just wanted to see how well it would print if I could still print a full small tray of things on the Elegu Mars. And I'm happy to report back that as I expected, it printed beautifully without any issue. Um, it, it turned out fantastic. So there's no problems printing solid parts, hollowed parts, multiple parts. The uh, wham bam resin flex plate system seems to hold up just fine. As I mentioned, they do have quite a few different sizes available currently. If you don't see one for your printer, I would recommend maybe reaching out to them and just letting them know what your resin printer is and that you're interested in it because um, like their regular flex plate system for uh, extrusion based 3D printers, they started off with a few different sizes and kind of expanded their catalog as they got feedback and there was um, the demand for these various sizes. So it would definitely be worth taking a look at. And if this is something you're interested in, I will place links down below, of course, in the description where you can find out more. If there's something specific about this system that you've got questions about, please also let me know uh, in the comments down below and I'm more than happy to uh, answer those questions or reach out to Wambam if I don't have the answers to those questions. They're always very responsive and more than happy to uh, answer any questions that I shoot over to them. So on that note, guys, this has been Daniel from Modbot. Thank you so much for watching uh, another video. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday and I've been so pumped on all of your guys' support. It's been absolutely insane. If you guys want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links below in the description to my Patreon. And I really appreciate all of you guys that have helped support this channel and allow me to continue doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video and I'm out. Peace guys.